four, so you know. Okay, the, the first spot up here. is for the radical sign. It is this down here. This is a radical sign. I did it in one color. It's the radical sign slash symbol. It can be referred either way. While you still have that color in your hand, I'd like you to skim the directions on the bottom half of this sheet for simplifying radicals and see if you see the term radical sign or radical symbol. When you see it, underline it with the same color. We are then going to turn this sideways and fill this in with a vocabulary term you already know. Coefficient. Skim the directions at the bottom and underline where you see the word coefficient in the same color. I referenced this word yesterday when I was showing you that sometimes we have numbers other than an invisible two. When there is a small number here, it is the index. Notice this little star here. It goes to this asterisk down here. If the index is not written, it is automatically a two. And remember, the index is directly related to a power when we've got a base and a power. Yes, take that color and go see if you see the word index in the directions. And our final piece of a radical is the radicand. And it will get you the most underlines. It's whatever is inside the radical symbol. We are going to use these steps on the back page of our um, Cornell notes. I did a little writing on this, but hopefully your black your black back page is blank. I was trying to say black page, weird blank and back somehow combined in my head. And we are going to do a couple of examples. What's that? No. If I was smart, I would just have a blank piece of paper up here, but I'm going to recycle it at the end. So, Okay, examples. Let's start off with We'll zoom in on that. So our radicand in this case is 200 x squared y to the third z squared.
Step one says find the prime factorization of the radicand. This is why we practiced prime factoring the other day. We're going to find the prime factorization of 200. You can make a treat, you can use the cake. You're then going to take those prime factors and you're going to rewrite this with its prime factors. And we have three twos and two fives. Who's with me so far? Do you understand what I've done? I took the number 200. It's still in there. I just broke it up into its prime factors. We're going to do the same thing with the variables. How many X's do we have? x squared means that there are two of them. y to the third means that there are three y's. And z squared means two z's. They look different, but they are the exact same thing. You guys with me? Okay, let's look at the next step. The index of the radical tells you what size of, the, of identical groups could be removed from the radicand. We're trying to factor things out of the radicand. And we're going to circle these groups. What's invisible here? Two. So I can circle these two twos because my index is two. There's only one more two, so does it get circled? No. Nope. But I've got these two fives, these two x's, two of the y's, two of the z's. What I am pulling out of the radicand is two times five times x times y times z. Because for each circled group, the number or variable will be multiplied by the coefficient of the radical one time. There is no coefficient out here. It's an invisible one. So that means that these things, each one I circled, because I circled two, I get one two. Because I circled two fives, I get one five. What is two times five? Ten. So this equals 10 x, y, z, and what's left inside the radical? 2 and y. And there's my answer. The radical sign doesn't disappear because we didn't factor everything out. Who's looking really confused? So did second period, but by the time they left, they liked doing these. Trust me, will you? Trust me? Okay. You guys have actually been following these steps without knowing them. Let's do another example. What is the answer to that? So let's follow the steps. If, if I factor 64 down to its primes, A lot of twos. One, two, three, four, five, six. I get six twos. So step one, find the prime factorization of the radicand. Did we do that? Step two, the index of the radical tells you what size of identical groups can be removed. What's our index here? Two. two. So I'm going to circle groups of two. How many twos, groups of twos are circled? 
2 times 2 is? 4. Times 2 is? 8. This equals 8. Is there anything left in the radical sign? It disappears. So you guys have been doing this when you've got a square root that is a perfect square. Does this make sense? Yes. Eric's like, no, still not yet. I'll get you there, I promise. Okay, we're going to do some examples because that is the only way to make this start making sense. I would like you guys to get a dry erase pocket and make sure you've got a pen that works and we're going to do some practice for about a half an hour.